In this video, I'll show you a really awesome Blue Pill application. The Blue Pill platform is a Linux driven platform and we can install all kinds of apps on ScourOS, which is the name of the Linux operating variant, system variant that we have installed on it. And uh, device call link, that application allows you to take any broadcast device like an ATEM switcher, cameras, NetIO, power sockets, PDC cameras, video routers, all these devices that we already support on the blue pill for our panels can be broken out in a simple TCP based interface. Look at a command string like this one, just simple text string that identifies the device and also the parameter you want to change and the value you want to change it to. That's what you'll see in this video. In front of me, you see a terminal window. On Windows, you have an application like Putty. You can use that as well to connect to the device call link application that is running on the blue pill. On the Mac, I would usually use NC for Netcat and uh, type in the IP address of the blue pill and the port number that I know I can connect to. And it looks like this when you're successfully connected. Now, there are a few commands that we'll look closer at in this video. One of them is list, and that shows you all the device calls that is on your blue pill. And uh, those of you who know Blue Pill already, let's just go into the UI of Blue Pill because you are familiar with the devices tab here. You see an ATEM Mini, ATEM 2ME Production Studio is there. There is an, a Panasonic AWUE70 camera. There is also a smart video hub here. And those devices are actually reflected right here. So you also see that there's another Panasonic camera which is currently not connected. And that is also listed, but it is stated as not being connected. So we cannot work with that one, but we will be able to see that it's possible to work with it if we turned it on. So that's how this works. But this is the overview of devices we can interact with. If you are in watching this video to work with ATEM switches, then we could uh, try to, to start with this one. And a good idea, if you, if you want to see what we can do on that one, is to type in the command list.io, by the way, if you type in help, you get all the commands. And list.io is a short command for seeing what parameters are available on that first ATEM switcher. That's the ATEM Mini. This is, in fact, the ATEM 2ME Production Studio Control. And if we go to the reactor UI we just inspected, we see that this has device ID number two. And and therefore, I'm actually on a, on a wrong track because I was, um, I was looking at Sorry, I don't know if I can do this. Let's uh, list IO and, and send this back again. I was listing the command set for the ATEM Mini that has device ID number one. Let's just type in two instead and then do that. So now I have the command set that is valid for my software control, um, ATEM software control for the ATEM 2ME. Okay, anyway, I want to do something fairly simple, which would be a cross point change. So it is so helpful that you can just copy this line and then basically paste it in here. Now, all you need to do is to observe the value of the ME and I need to pick either ME1 or ME2. Let me just do that, Let's type in five. So as I now execute this line shortly, we should see that the program input changes to five, okay? So let's go back here, maybe reduce the window just slightly. It's just nice having it so big because of this huge information table. Are you ready? All right. I was wrong. It was the preview. Sorry, I was changing preview, not program. But we saw that it worked. So that's great. Okay, what else can we do? Can we, um, what about cuts? What if I search cut? Will I have some chance of, of sending a cut transition? Yes, I have it right here. Now, in this case, this is a one shot parameter. It's set right here. So there's not like a value we can set. We can just send a like a one to indicate that we want to send that trigger over. So let's do that and also with one equals one, like that. So what we'll see now should be these two, these two, uh, two inputs on program and preview should actually swap space, uh, place, okay? And that did not happen. And that is because I did it on the wrong switcher. Sorry guys, I was uh, probably searching too far back in my history there, so let's just type this in correctly. I, I did it on the ATEM Mini. And um, there we go. So now you saw me doing it on the switcher that I'm currently looking at. Just for fun, why not just try it quickly to connect to the ATEM Mini right here? So this is where we, we use this command essentially. And so from the same from the same connection, ah, okay, let's just see. We have camera one and camera four here. Are you ready? So we'll just send this once again. And now we see 
camera four and camera one. They have swapped space now. Okay, so this is um, that that was the atom switch. What about the other things? I have a video hub on my network, and uh, we see it right here. So let's just uh, list I O for. Oh wait, let's just try list, and because it's useful to just copy the string, so, uh, list I O, paste this one in. So these are the commands for the video hub. Nice. So we could uh, change a route like this command looks like the right one that we want to use. And let's just see, we are currently looking at destination number three, it is on 12. All right. Actually, if I just send it right here, like destination three slash, you will know the value that it currently has, it will tell you that the value is 12. So if I type in three slash equals five, we'll see the routing has changed. Isn't that great? Same UI, same principle. We work with a video hub. We have worked with an ATEM switch of vastly different protocols. The video hub actually does have a nice TCP protocol, but what you get here is the same API, the same command set type, the same way of addressing it, and also subscriptions, which I'll get back to in a moment. We have more devices we can control. So let's go to um, the, um, the, uh, the Panasonic camera, which we have right here. So on this one, um, let's just put the image so we have a chance of seeing it. We can look up that. So okay, let's try list again. We have the Panasonic PDC camera. That would be the one we are connected to right here. So let's try that list IO. Oops, list IO and type that in. So looking at this command set, let's see what we can uh, fancy. Of course, recalling a preset is a fun thing. So why not try that one out? It's just a one shot trigger like the cut was on the ATEM switcher. So we'll type this in. Let's recall preset number one equal one to execute. And there we go. A preset is being executed on this camera. What about preset two? Could we do the same slash equals one? And it goes to a different preset. Nice. And what if I want to change a setting? What setting would that be? Maybe white balance mode like this guy. And now notice that the list IO will tell you all these values we can set. So we uh, we have auto tracking white balance, we have white balance A and B, we have a preset 3200 Kelvin, which has the value four. let's try that one. So setting this to value four. let's are you ready? So see, we should see a change some sort of reaction on the picture. And we actually do now it's changing to to 3200 Kelvin. And if I try just one more time, we should be able to use that preset that will give us outdoor lighting. And then we are probably back at the value just before you have just seen three different devices, actually four different devices being controlled through the same TCP connection with human readable text commands. And that's all what device uh, call link is about this application. This slide shows you how device call link works inside the blue pill. So once again, this little device hosts all this software. Actually, this device is talking both to cameras and switches, but it's also offering that TCP interface. So applications inside of this one, it's, it's actually called DC link dash TCP. That's the application you will be looking for. And we'll see that in a moment. It has this TCP interface to the external world. So you can have one or more connections on the port as we just did. In fact, you can have multiple of these ports set up, which we'll see in the config in a moment. Then on the other side, this application is connecting to devices through what we call device cores. So we have an internal, um, we have an internal protocol intermediate format be between ATEM switches and cameras. In a sense, this is not interesting for you as such, because for you, all you'll see is the unified TCP API accessing robotic cameras, various types of devices. In this case, it's an audio device. It could be an ATEM switcher. They have vastly different protocols. This could be Visca. This could be XC protocol from Canon. It could be many other things. Now, this connection is over something called gRPC. Some of you will know what that is, probably few. And then we have this application called device core connector because the device cores themselves are called the applications inside of the blue pill is called core BMD ATEM, for instance, or core Canon XC or core direct out prodigy. And then the device core connector is basically a, the application that takes all those and makes into a, a, um, um, a single connection for the device call link application to connect to. 
Whew. Okay, it's getting a little bit complex, but I think the main thing that I want you to notice here is if you follow the biggest blue area, that would be my blue pill today, this, this little guy. It has this application running and these down here. But let's say that for load balancing reasons or whatever, you might want to have a second blue pill somewhere else on your network. You can do that and that blue pill can be connected to your devices and then we can connect over network to that blue pill. So now we'll take a look at the configuration and you can see where you would set this up. Inside the blue pill, you go to the packages tab and in the packages tab, you see a few device cores is running. There you have the core BMD ATEM, you have core BMD Video Hub, you have the core Panasonic PTC. You can see this list is huge. I have a ton of device cores installed on my blue pill here. They're just currently not running because those are not the devices I'm talking to. And of course you can search for available packages because we have many more packages that you can install and run in this way. The application device core connector is right here and all you need to do basically is to install it and make it run and it will be that connector for our um, DC link TCP application. And now that I'm back here in this list, that is the application that we're looking for. DC link TCP, that's the name of our application. This configuration is for how many link servers that you want. So on the slide you saw a moment ago, we need a server for each type of endpoint we are connecting to. So if we are connecting to ourselves, you get a configuration like this one. And that's actually the default. It is more or less a matter of just clicking add entry, enable, you can give it a friendly name if you want. It doesn't matter a whole lot. The server port is probably fine, except in this case, I should choose a different server port because I'm now trying to start two connections. Okay, and then down here, we have the uh, device connector IP and port. So um, now I know because by default, this is localhost and that means it connects to ourselves. This is what we are doing today. But let's say, and I know I have a different blue pill in the network. So if I wanted to go to that one, I think it's on two like that, I would actually be, a, and I don't need to actually put in the port number because that's also implicit. If you don't set it, then it will use 8502. You can also add a number of max clients and lock to IP for some sort of, uh, some level of security. And then finally, let's just uh, save and restart this guy. Okie dokie. So as we just did that, we were uh, thrown off the network here. So we just need to reconnect and uh, let's type in list. Okay, so we see the same because we really didn't change anything for that one, did we? But if I go over here and I type in netcat and this, and in this case, I think was it 97? You see, I am now connected again because I set up a second server and if I type in list on this one, I actually see nothing. And that is because I am connected to a different um, blue pill, but there were no device cores that we could actually see in this case. So uh, bummer, but the point was that I was able to reach a different uh, blue pill that has a list of device cores that it would be hosting for us and offering them over network to the um, DC link application right here. That was a lot of technical details. Let's move on and then do something exciting, which is subscriptions. That is the one thing that I just wish everybody had. When you connect to the devices, you had a way to just tell the device, please tell me about anything that changes inside of you, instead of me having to ask the device all the time. But unfortunately, that's often the case. Now we make that simple as well, because we do all this device core integration work that takes a ton of time and costs a lot of money and we put that into this intermediate format so that you can enjoy it with all the features that we would wish we had if we could just rule the world of APIs. Now, here is um, an example that's kind of also reaching over to, if, if some of you guys have seen the TCP link for ATEM video and that device, Anytime you have an ATEM switcher like this one and you poke around in it, it will actually tell you something is happening. Now, we don't do that by default because if we were connected to like a ton of devices here, 20 or 100, then you don't want to be spammed by all of them. So we do it like more selectively. And if you type in help, then you'll see a little list of commands you can use. Oh, by the way, as we're talking about this, list devices, it has this short form, but if you type in list devices like this, 
it will list devices. Okay, nice. You can also have it in JSON. So in case you do integration here and you want list of devices, you can actually connect and get a machine readable format returned to you. So you'll probably be happy with that. And the same is actually true if you took such as the list IO command we used earlier. And uh, let's try that one for the um, uh, DC BMD ATEM slash one. So this is the ATEM mini, and we are now getting a JSON version of all the parameters that we have inside. Voila! There you go. So I pretty quickly want to get back to my help screen again. But I, th these are just super cool features inside. Then these two lines are basically telling you what we have seen before, that we have ways to, if, if we know list.io DC BMD ATEM slash one, then if we took any of these parameters we have here, like the, let's take an auxiliary channel, then um, the help is basically telling us that if we are dealing with auxiliary channel one and we just do this, we'll know what is the, the current source on that one. While if we are uh, trying to set it like this, then we are setting the auxiliary channel to input number two. Um, basically, that that is this one. And then let's try that again to see the value coming back from it. There we go. So it now was two. But hey, wouldn't it be cool if the switcher told us that the value had changed to two? So what I can do is I can type in subscribe. And that's what you see right here. There's also an unsubscribe function and you can list subscriptions. So basically I can now say, yes, please tell me any time the parameter org source is changing. This is the format, okay? So we, we now subscribe and it will give us the value actually. So um, let me go to the switcher and, and we'll just do it from that one. I change camera one here. You see it is updating because I just subscribed to that value. Okay. So what happens if I change source over here? No, I don't hear anything about that. And that's because I've not subscribed to those parameters. But there is actually a way you can subscribe to everything. But let's just uh, list subscriptions subscriptions like this. Okay, so I see, okay, I'm subscribed to the auxiliary source. Okay, great. Now, um, if I subscribe to subscribe and then to just the device call reference, I'm now getting all values inside the ATEM switcher delivered to me. It takes a little while, but now Anytime I make a change to basically anything inside the switcher, it's going to tell me right here, just like the original TCP link for ATEM application and device uh, is doing. So it's possible to subscribe minimally and also to everything. And that's basically um, a very central feature here in the um, device calling that you can do this because in your in your applications, it's it's so nice to being informed immediately when anything happened in the device. I can now list subscriptions and I'm pretty sure I'll get a pretty long list, yes. And then you can probably also do that unsubscription. So let's try that eventually, just unsubscribe all and we should basically not see any updates coming to us anymore. Perfect, it just works, that's super nice. I, I want to note one thing, and that is inside Reactor, some of you guys who know this system already, you also know that on the home screen, if you go to the Devices tab in the home screen, over here, and you click the Edit icon of any of the device calls, there's this green button called Parameter List. And in fact, this list is sort of what you already see in a table in, in, in the table view that we have seen a few times. If I type List.io, and then, um, or it could also be the video hub. Let's try that one. Wait, I really don't want to do this wrong. So I just take list IO and I tend to copy paste this one because it's so convenient like that. Then this list of things that I see here are list IO DC BMD ATEM slash one. This list I see here is essentially what you get in this one, it's just the, the specific thing. We, we had a, an ATEM 2 ME production studio 4K. So these are the things that we're seeing in that list. Maybe if we look for audio mixer tally, if we search that one up here. Okay, what will it say about values? Uh, no, it didn't say a whole lot in that case, but let's try this one maybe, okay. 
So you can see this one called Audio Mixer Input Mix Option. It has uh, three things we can choose between 0, 1, and 2 for off, on, and audio follow video. And if you look inside in, in this table, you're basically seeing a reflection of the exact same values over here. So um, this table is the same as, as that table, but this is like the overall complete overview of the device core for all Blackmagic ATEM switches we are supporting. And by the way, that list is pretty comprehensive because you you see, you know, if you scroll to the side, you get all these models out there. There's a ton of ATEM switches. Please stop Blackmagic design. That's crazy what you're doing, but great. We love them. And if we go in here, look at the parameter list for the video hub, it's, it's naturally a little more modest selection of things that you can do. There's just less. And that is exactly what we saw um, in the previous list. If we did the list IO video hub slash one, then we see, oof, that was not right. So exactly what I feared. OBMD video hub. Nice. We'll just do that. And this list of things with the types, one shot, normal values, and so on, the value ranges you can set for such as route input to output. And now notice if you if you look in here, route input to output, that value range, which is set to one to 16, is actually depending on which model we are connected to. I think it's a smart video hop, so it's probably this guy. And that is the integer range mentioned right there in the uh, device call uh, documentation we are looking at. The Viki is the place to go if you want to know details about how device call link works. Here you have even a little the drawing that we've been exploring. There are some command examples that you can study. There's explanation of how to, to set it up. Um, we also have yeah, basically going through the different commands that I've been covering. And then finally, some information about licensing. Of course, this application is not for free. This is something that you need to acquire a license for. We may also come up with bundles because I know a lot of you guys will just want to have a blue pill with the application inside. So it's very likely that we'll have some special offers where you get this all in one single package. But it is possible to actually save a blue pill and have it running on a Skahoy panel if that is more uh, if, if that is better for your integration work. That's the great thing about Blue Pill Platform, that it offers a lot of flexibility in this sense. Thanks for watching. I hope this is inspiring. Please reach out to me on uh, innovationlab at skahoy.com if you have uh, questions or if you want to interact with us on uh, working on this one. Uh, at this point of the video, we um, when we record the video, we actually uh, have a, a little pool of uh, test licenses that we are giving away for free for early adopters so that you can help us test it out and give us some feedback to make the final crucial details uh, get in line and uh, into the software.